London's Chinatown wasn't always in Gerrard Street in the West End. At the beginning of the 20th century, it was down in Limehouse, and this was because ships docked there, Chinese men stayed there for a week or two, a month or two. Some settled, opened shops and restaurants. Although this was a very tiny Chinatown in terms of numbers, the myth of Chinatown then was huge in the popular imagination, thanks to novels by writers like Sax Roma, who wrote about Fu Manchu, the villain operating out of Limehouse. You know, Chinatown was seen as a hotbed of opium dens and poisonings and all sorts of misdemeanors. This myth of the yellow peril was taken up by Hollywood, and so Chinatown attained this legendary status out of all proportion to the actuality. Chinatown moved from the East End to the West End. Initially, because of slum clearance after the First World War, I think Chinatown had gained such a bad reputation that it was decided by um, the Municipal Council to eradicate these streets pretty much, which they did. The reason that Chinese people moved to, to set up businesses throughout England was simply because there were opportunities to do so. People liked to eat Chinese food um, and that was a way of, of making a living, raising a family um, and integrating with the wider community. One of the stories that we have is Don Mei who's pictured here with his father. His father uh, started up a Chinese tea house and holistic medicine shop in, in Camden actually. And Don, his father is from, from China. His mother is Swiss German and he told me many uh, very touching stories actually about how they met here in London and the kind of cultural exchange that they had as well. The Chinese diaspora is really large, it's not just mainland China, it can take place from, from Hong Kong, people of Chinese descent in Hong Kong emigrating to the UK from Malaysian descent, from Singaporean descent, for example like my own family from Mauritian descent as well. And also I found that identity can be quite fluid. It's really up to the individual how much they feel British and how much they feel Chinese. For example, I can't speak Mandarin. Um, and I did interview some other people who can, but sometimes they felt very much British. They really identified with British culture and they said, I am British.